Corona 14 comes with a series of AI improvements that will be super useful and easy to incorporate into our daily workflow, acting as a booster for our creativity and storytelling. Ah, and there's also something new about the moon. Let's begin with AI and answer. This artificial intelligence function will take care of adding details to people and vegetation, especially in your existing renders. To activate it, we must include a special render element called AI Enhancer before rendering. Once your render has finished processing, you will click on this icon. This will open a window to upload your image to a project folder you select. This entire process will take place automatically in the Chaos Collaboration Cloud. Once this process is finished, we'll open the image from the cloud. Then we'll press the Enhance button and wait for the job to finish. Ok, now serve the details that AI Enhancer added, especially on the people. However, this won't be all. This is where the magic happens. From this Edit button, you will see that we access two tools. Let's explore this one, AI Enhancer. From here, by moving the cursor of the image, we can see that this tool automatically identifies people and vegetation objects with the masks, thanks to the guidance of the render element we're using. If you click on any person, a floating window will appear where you can see the AI Enhancement versions as a layer system. When you click on Create New, you will see that we have many options available in an easy and friendly layout to change age, gender, or even adjust details like ethnicity, facial expression, and hair color. In this example, we just replaced this man with an Asian and smiling person. It's incredible how easily we can change this and above all, how perfectly consistent the adjustment is with the rest of the image. If you move the cursor, you'll see that we can even apply changes only to the people's faces as well, by following the same process. Although this girl is already smiling, we can try other expressions or faces. Let's now try adjusting creativity on the plant. We achieved all this without needing to re-render or look for better 3D models. This speeds up our work quite a bit. Look at this panel. From here, we'll see the changes applied to the image's layers, which we can delete if we wish. As an additional detail, for every change you make, a small blue dot will appear indicating where AI adjustments have been applied on our image. Additionally, you can also activate or deactivate changes from this icon. Once you finish retouching, you can save the image and then download it from here or share it with your team or client. It often happens that we have to render with very high quality, but we don't have the necessary time for the image to be processed with the level of detail and the cleanliness we want. Likely, with Corona 14, we can now render at a small size and increase the resolution and detail of the image in a fraction of the usual time. The upscaling process is normally done simultaneously with the AI Enhancer, and this is automatic, thanks once again to the AI Enhancer render element. For example, this render started with a size of 1500 pixels on its longest side. With the AI Upscaler, we can increase it even more to 2 or 4 times. Now we simply select the sites and click on Upscale to start the process. This upscaling took some minutes to complete, a time far shorter than a normal rendering process from 3ds Max. This comparison shows how the resolution improves while preserving strong fidelity to the original image. It prevents the unnecessary hallucinations common in external AI tools. You can see details like the floor, the definition of the accessories, the increased definition of the marble, and in each area, the AI upscale remains completely faithful to the source. This is a magnificent addition to this Corona release. 
It totally optimizes our render times by rendering at small resolutions and then upscaling with AI Upscaler. We can also use the LightMix Pass and send it directly to the cloud to work with AI Enhancer. It's not the only beauty pass render element. For this, we must first make sure that LightMix is obviously enabled in the render. And with this render element selected in the frame buffer, we'll be able to upload it to the cloud. We can make the same adjustments as in our previous version and we'll see that, interestingly, it is very consistent with the faces in daytime version of this scene. There may certainly be some differences, but they are very subtle. Wait a moment! Have you noticed this moon icon here in the toolbar? This is a new great addition that will help us reinforce storytelling in our renders. To start, we place the existing sun in our scene and move it below the horizon line so that the, our sky takes the physical nighttime tones. Then you can add the Corona Moon directly from this icon in the Corona toolbar or from the common panel in the lights category and place it in the scene the same way we are used to with the sun. I look for a specific area in front of the camera so we can appreciate how the moon looks. Now we can, for example, change its sights and this is where we can really get more creative. The moon actually acts as a light source, so we should try different values to understand the effect it has on our image. Usually I start by increasing the values dramatically to make the effect more obvious and then lower them to reach a good result. Disk brightness affects how bright the moon objects will be in the render and this does not affect the actual emitted light. In my opinion, it's not very appealing to increase it too much since we lose the typical moon texture and it becomes a flat white circle without volume. And with the phase parameter, we can set the moon phase we desire, creating a beautifully poetic result. The final touch can be done by the Glow option, one of the features I like the most. With this, we can add the typical moon glow effect that gives the sky a great look. It's also worth mentioning that the corona sky that was connected to the sun is the exact same one used for the moon. In other words, you don't need to worry about assigning a different sky for the moon, because Corona handles this automatically by copying the sky as an instance in the material editor. Here you see now we have a new section called Night Sky Parameters. From here we can enable the stars, which are essential in an artistic sky. We can adjust their sights. And if you can't clearly see them, try increasing the intensity from this checkbox so you can begin to notice the changes. Here we can already see them appearing little by little as an interactive render progresses and refines the image. For now it doesn't look very natural since all the stars are exactly the same size. If we change the size difference value to 1, we can see randomness in the star sizes, giving it a more accurate look. We also have the option to add the Milky Way to the sky. We can increase the value exponentially until it starts to become more noticeable. Now you can see how the sky's brightness and the sharpness start changing with the latitude and longitude. We can change the position of the Milky Way in the image and aim to center it more intentionally. And of course, we can adjust the intensity. This is another feature that Corona has made easier for us, helping us forget about the traditional technical side and focus more on the creative side, the part that can truly make our images stunning and stand out.